Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about griddle seizing mistakes. We're going to make some ourselves today and show you guys how to correct them, plus some common questions that we frequently get. You guys stay tuned. All right, so today is all about mistakes. We're going to try to replicate some of the common ones. Um, I would not say we get bombarded, but it's definitely probably the highest thing on the list that's commonly asked, whether it be our Facebook group, our Facebook page, um, Instagram, TikTok, um, YouTube, it doesn't matter. Seasoning mistakes. I did this to my griddle, uh, what do I do? This color of my griddle, what do I do? My griddle's doing this, what do I do? And it's so hard to troubleshoot because I don't know what you did to begin with. I don't know the process of what you do. So I try to diagnose it with the best information I have possible. So today is all about trying to incorporate all the knowledge that we have to hope that in, in hopes that you guys have a better seasoning experience. You ready? All right, number one. Obviously you got your new griddle. We got the Blackstone using today. Um, the first thing you wanna do is clean your griddle. Uh, the griddle, is, most of them, uh, probably need to do a, a self-announcement or awareness. The Pit Boss Ultimate Griddle comes with a ceramic coated griddle top. You have to excuse that griddle from this conversation. Um, and then your rest of the griddles, even the camp chef that comes pre-seasoned, uh, the Weber, although it did not say it came seasoned. I, I'm confident in that. Um, I still like to season over the pre-season, just like when you're using a lodge cast iron skillet you bought from the supermarket or online, you know, you want to wash it out and then season it. So that's the same thing. So let's say we got a Blackstone brand new. The first thing you want to do is wash it with soapy water. A common myth about, um, seasoning. Although it does produce a nonstick surface after a while, it's mainly about protection. That's its number one use is protection. It protects the iron. The second common myth is the difference of 2020 and beyond, 2000 and beyond versus the late 1800s, early 1900s when cast iron was being introduced and people were cooking with it. You can imagine when you're doing your cattle drive, you can imagine uh, when they were first being made. They didn't have the technology that we had today with the oils that we have at our supermarkets. They also use those pieces very often. That's the only thing they had to cook with. Campfires, stoves, um, heated with wood. They don't have electricity like we did. And the reason why I mention that is because there's so much of this bad negativity that's built through cast iron. You can't clean it with soap and there's only one way to season it. There's only one way to use it and that's bacon fat. I'll get to that later. I just want to basically hone in on the part of times have changed. It's the same thing about the oils that we use. When these people were using a cast iron a long time ago, they were using it often. They were using it three, four, five times a day to feed their families. So bacon fat then, although it's still bacon fat today or animal fat, was also treated different. They didn't have the chemicals that the grocery store bacon has today. So how they kept their cast iron is different than how we should keep our rolled steel and cast iron today because there's new technologies available along with the idea of how little the average person uses their griddle outdoors you've got to combine all that together when you're talking about griddle season mistakes okay so the very first thing is clean off your griddle the second thing is what oil should i be using common mistake why your griddle seasoning sucks is because you're using the wrong oil Let's piggyback off the animal fat. I suggest you do not use bacon fat or lard or animal fat for your actual seasoning process. If you want to keep your griddle seasoned after the fact, I can understand it. Your first one needs to be a little bit better. That's your base layer. That's your patina. That's your blackening. Um, your average person, like I said, is not going to use their griddle enough. And when you use animal fats like bacon, it has chemicals in it. It actually has salt in it to cure it. So salt dries out your oils. It will go rancid. Uh, it will mold on you if you're not uh, careful with it. So that's why for your initial seasoning, let's stay away from animal fats. Let's start trending towards the fats like these, okay? This is a very common type of um, oil to use. I know Blackstone has their own conditioning and seasoning oil. Uh, Traeger sent this to me with my Traeger griddle. Um, I haven't used this one, nor have I used the, um, the Blackstone. I'm not saying they're not bad products at all. I'm just saying if you're going to throw your $10 into the, the loop, you might as well get something you can cook with later. Okay. So what do I mean by that? 
If you're gonna throw $10 at this product with a Blackstone product, then it's only used for seasoning. Well, if you could throw the same $10 into one of these three, then to me, it's almost like you're getting your money's worth. You're getting more bang for the buck. Not only is it gonna do a great job at seasoning your griddle, which I recommend one of these three, but you're also cooking with it. So you're not necessarily cooking with this, you're only seasoning. So typically when I use the oils uh, for the griddle to season, that's what I'm talking about. It's more bang for the buck. And that's why I choose these. When we first started off doing cast iron, uh, we stuck a lot with Crisco. We switched over to the um, avocado oil. Both do a fantastic job. The last three, four, the last four griddles I've seasoned, I've actually used grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil is traditionally a little bit cheaper than the avocado oil. And for some reason, it's just absolutely been fantastic. I really, really, really highly suggest the grapeseed oil. Um, we can get into why the oils are important, but there's so many out there. So let's just go to the basics. A high heat smoke point oil that's neutral in flavor. Okay, you don't want a low, uh, low smoke point. Here, a lot of people talking about uh, flaxseed. The problem I have with flaxseed is the fact that the smoke point is so low, by the time you reach your 450, maybe 550 degrees, sometimes these griddles get even hotter. You've surpassed your smoke point so much that I think you're doing more harm to the oil than you are good at your griddle. Okay, so that's why we stay away from flaxseed. The griddle is not like an oven. You can't set your oven to three. I mean, you can set your oven to 300 if you're, let's just say your oil temperature is 250 to smoke at, okay? Your griddle's not like that. You can't hold your temperature on a griddle, whether you're on low, medium, or high, that low. So you're gonna overshoot that low smoke point. So that's why we stay away from oils like that. If I had to recommend two, this is what we're just looking at. 100% pure avocado oil. Notice this does not have olive oil in it. Um, there's a lot of purists out there that say you're actually not even supposed to heat up olive oil. So we stay away from olive oil on the griddle. But this is what I look for. 100% pure avocado oil, 500 degree heat smoke point. Um, there's also another one out there that we recommend better. Better body foods. Better body foods. Uh, better body foods. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. This one was just on sale, so we happened to get it. Like I said, the grape seed, high heat cooking, deep frying and baking. I love this stuff right here. This is what I've been on my kick lately. Okay. Mistake number three, you actually under season your griddle. And there's about three points that I want to hit very quickly. Number one is your griddle temperature is too low. Just because you have your griddle on high, medium, or low does not mean, mean that your whole griddle is hitting those certain temps. If your smoke point on an oil is 450 to 500, and there's a part of your griddle that doesn't meet that temperature, you're never going to be able to that you're never going to be able to season that part of the griddle. If you notice through here, it's very light colored and it wraps all the way around. That doesn't mean if it's on high, medium or low that it changes those temperatures. The border of my griddle are not getting hot enough to season my griddle along with the sods. It's the same thing. All right. So now we've talked about temperature. Now we're talking about the oil. Okay. Once you've applied your oil to the griddle, you're not allowing the griddle to actually do what it's supposed to do. You're not allowing it to actual season. You're rushing the process. So what happens is right now, you're supposed to allow the griddle to start smoking and then calm down, okay? That means that your oil is actually in the burning process. When you under season, you're rushing that process. You might have a thin coat, but you're like, well, I need to hurry up or maybe it's seasoned enough. There's a huge visual difference and when your smoke is rolling and when it dissipates, okay? So rushing your oil is bad because the oil hasn't had a chance to season correctly. Piggyback off that with a color uh, discoloration that we're talking about. This is more of a visual, okay? I hear people or I get the comment that their griddle has a lot of color variation in it along with when they use their spatula, they've got the color, right? You guys see that? and they're worried their griddle is going to rust. This is a telltale sign. Your griddle has a thin layer of oil on there that actually hasn't had a chance to season yet. It's an under seasoned griddle. So although your oil is burning, as you can see, it hasn't seasoned and created that deep patina that we need. Which is like, so it hasn't gotten to that like really hard Correct. seasoning. That's why you've got these marks. Exactly. And it's very easy, right? It's very easy to just go over. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about the color. 
so all you have to do is just keep keep your griddle going and it's eventually going to get back up to where it needs to be so now we've under seasoned you need to get it to season you'll notice that if you under season and you've got those colors and your griddle is sticky it's hard for me to do right now that's one of the uh the things i can't do because the griddle's so hot but if you notice you take a paper towel and you rub it across or your hand or you notice that debris is starting to stick you've got um your you could have it might not have been the amount of oil it could just be the fact that you rushed the process and you've got too much oil on your griddle even though you didn't add too much oil your griddle isn't accepting the oil anymore and you think that you have to put like a certain amount on there so two things that you could do you could scrape the excess off So you can actually see. Right. So that was, we had too much oil. Correct. And we didn't allow it to season. We we might have the right amount of oil, but we didn't allow it to season. So what happens is you just keep adding oil and oil and oil and oil on to unseasoned oil. The second thing you could do, you got to be very careful. Once your griddle gets up to temperature and you want to come back to it, you could also use a grill brick. I would not suggest using a grill brick and taking it back down to the bare metal, but it doesn't hurt to run a grill brick across of it. Um, just to get everything back to a neutral state. And then you could wipe it off, use a little water if you need to, a little soap if you needed to, and then you can start the reseasoning process. So under season is probably the most common thing that I see. Number four on the list, instead of going the under season side, we're gonna go to the over season side. You can have too much oil, we'll show you that. Um, and you can also have too high of a temperature. I know it sounds crazy. You always hear your griddle should be on high. I'm telling you, you don't have to do that. Your infrared thermometer will teach you a thousand different things when you first get it. The more you use it, the more or less you end up using this. Um, so let's go, let's show you right now. Too much oil, and I see it all the time. As the griddle heats up, you can see that we're starting to whiff smoke. If you notice, right through here is a patch that's gonna be extremely hot, and this is gonna be our number two. The rest of the griddle is not even hot enough at this point to actually start the seasoning process. This is actually going to start drying out. So what I'm going to teach you is how to use your oil accordingly. You don't have to keep adding oil and oil and oil to one spot. Use the oil in the rag that has accumulated the oils in the rag to start spreading your oils on your griddle. Because remember, the whole idea is thin. Okay. So this is what I see. Then they take a spatula. Because they think they spread it thin and they get their corners. You guys get the idea. And then that's their seasoning process right there. What that does is about the worst that you can do. So you see how we're wisping smoke in the middle? That's because the inside of the griddle is getting so hot that the outside has not had a chance to catch up. So this is actually gonna end up drying out. I'm actually glad this is happening because this basically illustrates everything that I've been trying to preach. My burner is right here. My burner is right here. If you notice, the oil is starting to separate and move away and actually cook right through here. But what's left is the oil in the middle because this is the cooler spot. Then the rest of the griddle itself is not even smoking and it's not even drying out. So that tells me two things. The griddle has never reached a certain temperature which goes back to being under seasoned while the same time you're over seasoning your griddle, okay? So this is what needs to happen. Once you start noticing your dry spots, you've already got too much oil on the griddle. The best way to take care of that is to keep a good rag, paper towels or whatever, and allow that area to keep seasoning, keep it moist, keep it full of oil because it's going to continue to stay hot. Notice how we're getting those white colors. That's what I was talking about earlier about paying attention to the color zones of your griddle. What happens is now your rag is going to start picking up an excess amount of oil, way too much. So our next seasoning layer doesn't necessarily have to have a fresh coat of oil on there. 
because you've added so much stuff to begin with. If I would have left this alone, which I did not want to, it's very hard to fix. If I would have left this alone, those pools of oil would have been an absolute disaster. That's when you'd have to take your scraper to scrape it up, maybe a grill brick. You'd have to keep cooking with it. Um, it discolors just like it would on the underside. And that's not the way, to, that is, that's probably the biggest mistake, the under and the over. When you add too much oil and thinking it's better for it, thinner is better. We're gonna let this keep burning. And as soon as the oil dissipates, I'm gonna show you the difference in the colorization. As you can see now, the smoke's not rolling near as bad. So that means that we're right in the zone of where we'd add another layer. What she's showing you right now is something that comes with time. And I've learned this along the way. When we talk about over seasoning, your next reaction would be add another thing of oil. Well, between the amount of oil that's in your um, paper towel already, and you can see, I hope we can see this on the camera, that there's a lot of oil left over on the edges all the way around your griddle that's not being used. So what you would do, hope you can see this in this angle, is use that excess and let that be the oil that seasons the griddle. Now you see how little of a oil there's on the griddle. That's your thin layers that we're talking about. Plus, if you leave this oil like this, this is how you're going to get a sticky griddle because your oil hasn't had a chance to burn and it's pooling. So that's why you want a dry griddle when you're done, okay? You can still really see it right here. Yeah. And that's also why we're about to get into the, the next part, which is the tools that you need. Um, as you can imagine, when your griddle is sitting at 450, 550, or 600, uh, everything gets extremely hot. The oil gets hot as well. I recommend using a long tiered uh, tongue. Um, I stay away from short handles, stuff like this when I'm seasoning because if you're not careful, and I've done it before when I seized my brother-in-law's griddle, and I knew better from my days in the Navy, the oil splattered in the corner, and when you're dragging something, like a paper towel, it might get hot. My thumb got caught in it and uh, burnt the dickens out of it. So the correct utensils and the safety of when you're seizing matters. There's also heat-proof gloves. We don't have any on the channel because I feel comfortable doing it. My wife has mentioned man, doesn't that get hot? Well, I'm used to it. Other people may feel different. There's heat proof gloves that you could wear um, when you're doing this, uh, this seizing process. So from here on out, it's basically just extremely thin layers and that's what it's all about. The last thing on the list, the fun part on the list, the most important reason why you actually bought the dang griddle, what to cook first. When you're talking about what to cook on your griddle first, there's a huge, library of what to cook. There are some mainstays to stay away from. And other than that, it's basically having fun. I would suggest this, especially if you're new to griddling, okay? Take the idea of onions, a zucchini squash, even just raw potatoes, something that would add a little bit more oil than normal, but it also helps you get into the motion of sweeping back and forth on the griddle. When you do your potatoes, your onions, or squash and zucchini, um, something similar like that. You could even do asparagus, like cut up. What it adds is more oil on the griddle, right? And every time you move those vegetables back and forth, you're adding another layer of oil on the griddle. I have a great video of how to re-season a flat top griddle. And the reason why that's important because during your process, you're actually going to learn that you can season your griddle through your cooking efforts. And it'll um, help keep your griddle maintained, which is what it's all about. You want to stay away from foods that are acidic. Anytime you add incorporate like tomatoes, tomato sauce, um, your lemons, your oranges, um, wines, stuff like that, because your seasoning might not be ready um, to try to help visualize this. Typically when I get a new griddle, I like to do a cheesesteak of some type of variation when I first get it. And there's actually a reason behind it. Uh, when I use onions and peppers, I'll add the oil down and I'll start put them all across the griddle. One, it'll add a thin layer of oil it'll help spread it. But two, you get like almost like immediate reaction of what the griddles want to do. Is it seasoned enough? And you'll be able to tell right away. It's all about a feel. If you'll notice that once your griddles calm down, by the time you start, by the time you finish, you should drill, feel a drastic difference in how um, slick your griddle should feel. 
and that's no different than your vegetables. I also like to choose a high fat beef, especially ribeye, it's predominant with cheesesteaks, because the fat in the beef helps season the griddle. That's when we're introducing the rendered fats like bacon, like pork, like beef, tallow, and stuff like that to your griddle. You get a great true reaction. And then of course, I like to finish it up on my second cook with a big breakfast. That's when you learn your temperature zones. That's when you learn if you need to go back in season. That's when you learn your hot spots. Um, and plus, let's be honest, who doesn't love breakfast on the griddle? And that's probably why you bought it in the first place. So there you are, common griddle mistakes that we see. We try to troubleshoot. If you guys have any questions or comments, you guys can shoot those underneath. Shoot us um, through Facebook or YouTube, it doesn't matter. We try to help as much as we can with the knowledge we have. We're not perfect, um, but hopefully that will get you past the scary part. If you guys are interested, we have a join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Check us out on the Griddle Group on Facebook, where ironically, guess what people are talking about? How to season a griddle. How did I mess up my griddle? What would you do on this griddle? And that's why we're trying to uh, help you right here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends.